Tomozaki was an ugly, disgusting loner who wasted his life playing video games just to escape his depressing reality. He soon discovered that his favorite pro gamer was the popular girl in school, however, she couldn't stand him being a social reject and made it her life's work to transform him into a Reese Lord. It was the end of the school day and Tomozaki was in the old AV room, playing his favorite video game, the Super Attack Families, popularly known as Takfem, and he was playing against Shuji Nakamura, a popular classmate of his. Nakamura had all the looks, the girls, good grades, and he was also athletic, but compared to him, Tomozaki was in the running for the loser of the year. However, there was one thing he was good at, which was this video game, but after defeating Nakamura, he started complaining about the game. Instead of accepting the fact that he was a sore loser, he blamed the game for his loss, so he suggested they play again. Still, Tomozaki said if he won, Nakamura would have to accept his defeat, and unsurprisingly, Tomozaki won again. After the game, Nakamura met some female students outside and suggested they stop somewhere on their way home to get some drinks. After they left, Tomozaki exited the school building and headed home while contemplating how much life was garbage. Later that night, Tomozaki sat in his room playing games against a player called Nanem, who was matching his moves. He was impressed by the fact that Nanem had refined his counter strategy, but even though he was better at fighting manoeuvres and combo building, no name was good at dodging combos something that top-tier players couldn't do easily because they preferred to use offense instead of defense, making him wonder why the second-best national player was very experienced in defense. He then realized that Noname was purposely getting beaten so he could train himself on defense, which he found impressive. After the game ended, Noname sent him a message asking if he lived in the Kanto region, and Tomozaki told him that he did, so Noname suggested they meet up. The next day at school, while everyone was fooling around and talking to friends, Tomozaki sat at his table watching them and wondered if he could ever become a top-tier character. During the break, Oi Hanami, a female classmate of his, called out to him, and when he stopped, she asked him if it was true he played Takfam with Nakamura. Tomozaki didn't know how to respond, so he asked how she knew, and she said it was all everyone was talking about before asking who won the game. Nakamura cut into the conversation, admitting he had lost, but said it wasn't a big deal and told her to come along instead of gossiping about it. That weekend, Tomozaki went to meet up with Noname because he was curious about the kind of person he was, but while reading a text from Noname describing the clothes he was wearing, he realized that Noname was a she and not a he. As he looked around, he noticed a girl wearing a beige-colored skirt, so he approached her, but when the girl turned, he discovered that she was Hanami. She was as surprised to see him as he was to see her and she found it hard to believe that Nanashi, the country's top player, was a dead-ass loser. Hanami told him that she was disappointed because the person she respected the most was a loser, and Tomozaki asked why she was being a rude bitch, but Hanami told him that she was only speaking the truth. Tomozaki argued that some things were better left unsaid, and said that it was rude to speak bluntly to someone she hardly knew. Hanami apologized for hurting his fragile ego and said that he was being rude by dressing like he shopped in a dumpster. Tomozaki told her it was a free country, and he could wear whatever he wanted, but she told him that it was a common courtesy to dress up when meeting people. She then assessed his dress from his shoes to his shirt and said that even Sticky Joe dressed better than he did. She even told him that his bed hair was an eyesore before turning around to leave, but Tomozaki felt insulted and stopped her. He told her that there was nothing wrong with who he was or how he dressed because not everyone fit in. He also said that unlike in a game, life had no rules which needed to be followed and everyone had their role. Unfortunately, his role in life was as a bottom-tier character, which was considered worthless to rich normies like her, which he despised very much. He told her everyone had their values and she shouldn't force hers on him. But Hanami told him that he was acting like he had plastic balls. She said that he was one of those people that blamed the game instead of owning up to the fact that their playing skills were shit. She told him that he could blame the world all he wanted, but as long as he never made a move to change things, he'd always be a pathetic loser for the rest of his life. Tomozaki argued that life wasn't like a game where he could change characters, causing Hanami to grab onto his hand and pull him along with her. Tomozaki found himself sitting in Hanami's room, and as he wondered how he'd gotten himself invited to the house of a hottie like her, she walked in with a different outfit. The dim-witted idiot mistook her for a relative, and she had to explain that she had taken off her makeup so she looked different. She said that it was easy to change someone's impression of you with little effort, and told him that as long as you had the right expression and posture, you could be whatever you wanted. 
Tomozaki didn't seem to grasp the meaning of what she was telling him. So she gave him a demonstration and said that by perfecting the two, he could be considered a normie. She told him not to assume that her stats were high because of how she behaved and said that she once lived an ordinary life when she was in elementary school. And Emmy explained that he could gain confidence and communication skills if he put in more effort and stopped behaving like it was the end of the world. She admitted that she had put so much effort into everything she did, but no matter how much she played Takfim, she couldn't beat Nanashi which was why she considered him to be someone more capable than she was. However, in the game of life, Nanashi was a loser, who life had made its bitch, and he just sat there and took it because he was too much of a coward to fight back. She said it was the most unforgivable thing to ever happen in her life, because the person she couldn't beat was just a worthless scumbag, which meant she was worse than him. Going further, she explained that the game of life was made up of many simple rules, making it a god-tier game, so she was going to teach him the rules one by one and make sure he played it like a pro. Tomozaki just stared at her like an idiot before saying her heartfelt speech was hardly convincing, but agreed with her that making no effort and blaming the game for his loss was a gamer's greatest shame. He admitted that she was the only player he respected because he had watched her play and could see all the effort and hard work she put in. Even though he felt like they couldn't understand each other, he asked her to explain how life was a god-tier game, so she told her that life was a god-tier game tied with Takfem for first place, which piqued his interest. He suddenly remembered how people online called him awesome because of how well he played Takfem, but he'd never gotten recognition from those around him even though he kept giving his time to it and getting results. He believed he didn't need recognition in real life since TACFAM was a god-tier game, which was enough for him. But for the first time, someone was telling him that life was just as engaging as TACFAM, making him feel like his efforts were being recognized. He was still of the opinion that life was a garbage game and TACFAM was far better, but said if what she was telling him was true then as a gamer he was willing to play. She explained that the first thing he needed to do was character development, and when they went out later, she gave him a box of face masks, saying that he was to wear it while he practiced his smile. The next day, she wrote down a list of goals she wanted him to achieve. The first was to get someone other than her to notice the improvements in his posture and appearance. The second was to get a girlfriend before the beginning of their third year. The final goal was to speak to three girls, two of whom she picked out and one of his choosing. When he got to class, he decided to do the task Anami had assigned to him. He remembered her advice on being straightforward when speaking with someone for the first time, so he asked Yuzu if she had any tissues. Yuzu told him she didn't bring any, but asked Fuka, the girl sitting behind her, if had any. Fuka gave them hers, and after Yuzu handed the tissue to him, she went to speak with her friends. Tomozaki had no choice but to use the tissue, however, Fuka asked him why he was grinning like the Joker. Embarrassed by this, Tomozaki told her that he was having a toothache, so he was grimacing not grinning. The next person he was to talk to was Mininami Nanami, so he headed to their next class where he knew she would be. When he got there, he noticed Tanami hadn't arrived, and he remembered she told him to only speak with the girls when she was around. So he stood next to the table like an NPC while trying to figure out what to do, but the next moment, Minami spoke to him, causing him to go into panic mode. He managed to respond to her, but she started laughing, saying that he was speaking like an old man. While she was laughing, Tama, another one of her classmates, arrived and asked what was so funny. So Minami explained it to her. While they were speaking, Nakamura and his friends arrived, and he asked Minami what had made her so worked up. She told him Tomozaki had made a joke, so he asked him to repeat it. Tomozaki did, but Nakamura and his friends didn't find the joke funny. Minami told them that they were too dumb to understand such a sophisticated joke, so she wouldn't blame them for it. Nakamura argued that at least his brain cells worked unlike hers, which was filled with TikTok trends. While they were talking, Tomozaki noticed Tama looking at Nakamura strangely and wondered what it was about. When he switched his attention to Minami and Nakamura, he heard Nakamura asking them to vote on who was weirder between him and Minami. Just then, Anami stepped in and told Nakamura to bug off and stop trying to pick on Tomozaki because he lost a game to him, shocking everyone. She then told him that he was behaving like an immature child which was why his girlfriend dumped him since she preferred to date real men like Kento Minami. She said if he wanted to prove himself he should do it by beating Tomozaki and Takfim, and he agreed. After he left, Minami and Tama thanked her for standing up to Nakamura, and she told them it was what friends did. Later that day, during their meeting in the sewing room, Hinami commended Tomozaki for the efforts he put into his first task 
even though he'd blown his nose in front of Fuko like an idiot and grinned like a scarecrow. But he told her that he'd made the whole thing awkward because he didn't know what to say. She told him it was alright, and said that as time went on he would get better. He then asked why Tama looked at Nakamura weirdly, so she explained that Tama had little tolerance for people like Nakamura. The next day, she told him that aside from working on his posture, he was to try talking to people while in a group. That evening after school, Tomozaki managed to insert himself into the conversation Hanami and Minami were having with their friends thus completing his goal. When they got to the train station, Hanami informed him that he and Minami lived in the same neighborhood and encouraged him to try having a conversation with her. While they walked home, he asked Minami how she was always so happy and cheerful, and she told him that she believed that facing the world with a smile was a good thing, even when things were bad. They soon got to a zebra crossing, and as they waited for the lights to change, Minami asked if something was going on between him and Hanami, and he told her that there was no way a Brinch like him could ever bag a baddie like Hanami. The next day, Hanami told him to practice introducing new topics and expanding on them when he was speaking to people. She then gave him some flashcards with different topics on them, saying that if he ever got stuck on a conversation, he could use them. She also gave him a voice recording, which she told him to use when practicing so he could know what he had to improve on. And Amy told him that as of his training, he was going to spend his Saturday with her. That Saturday, Tomozaki arrived late at the mall and apologized to Hanami for showing up late. She decided to give him a pass because he managed to dress appropriately for their second outing. When he asked why they had come to the mall, Hanami didn't respond, but she smiled at him, causing him to worry about what she had planned. She then took him to a clothing store and explained that she was going to teach his fashion reject brain how to match clothes, calling it his character creation part two. She pointed at a mannequin and said that it was better to buy a mannequin's outfit because the store's employees worked together to create the mannequin's outfit, which she said was like borrowing a pro's fashion sense. After he picked one he liked, Hanami told him to approach the store's employee and ask to try on the clothes. Tomozeki was surprised because being a spoiled brat, he believed he could just buy it as it was, so Hanami had to explain to the pea-brained idiot that they had to find his size. When she noticed his hesitation, she asked why he was being a chicken and told him to just tell the employee that he'd like to try on the outfit. Tomozeki kept repeating the words as he approached the employee, but when he got there he started stuttering because his 500 megabyte processor brain had forgotten what he was supposed to say. So, instead of asking to try on the mannequin's outfit, he asked to buy the mannequin making Hanami wonder what kind of half-wit she was going around with. Later on, they went to a restaurant, and Tomozaki asked what kind of training he could get in a restaurant. Hanami told him they were just getting lunch to pass time before his hair appointment. She then asked if he decided on what he wanted to order, and after he told her she suggested they share their meal. After they ordered, she asked if he listened to the recording she had given to him, which he said he did, so she asked what observations he made from it. Tomozaki admitted that his voice sounded different, and he noticed that most times he was mumbling like an idiot. Hanemi told him that he could make changes by relying on words or phrases since he noticed. She told him that because he had a resting bitch face, his emotions weren't getting to people, so she said he was only allowed to use vowels throughout their conversation. Hanemi explained that he'll have to convey his emotions through his facial expressions, gestures, and tone of voice. Just then, their server returned with their food, but when she called Tomozaki's name, they realized it was Fuka. Hanami greeted her, after which Fuka said she was surprised the two were friends, so Hanami explained that they became close after their home economics class. When she left them alone, Hanami told Tomozaki that Fuka was going to be his first heroine, which surprised him. She explained that they would work to make Fuka his girlfriend, because out of all the girls he'd interacted with, she was the only one who felt promising. She further explained that when he asked Yumu for tissues, Fuka already had hers out, but Tomozaki didn't understand. Hanami then pointed out that when Fuka came to drop off their food, she called his name first, even though she was sitting next to him. She said it was normal to greet a person of your gender first, but Fuka had spoken to him first, which meant she was interested in him. Tomozaki said it was crazy to make Fuka his girlfriend because of her suspicions about Fuka's feelings for him but Hanami said there was nothing wrong in trying to find out if he also had feelings for her. When she asked if he wanted to quit, he told her that although he thought it was wrong to fool Fuka, he had already made up his mind to play the game of life, so he would see it through to the end. The next day, in the sewing room, an excited Tomozaki told Hanami that he had completed one of his smaller goals. 
Hanami asked which one, so he told her that his little sister had asked if he was taking a course on how to get laid because he was changing. Hanami asked why he was so happy after what his sister said to him, but he told her that it didn't matter because he had cleared a task, so she congratulated him. However, he said that the only thing he'd done was mimic the mannequin's dress and get a new haircut. But Hanami pointed out that he was putting in the effort to correct his expressions and posture, which was already paying off. She said that he may not have met the goal on his own, but he went after the results with his hands, so he should give himself some credit. She then told him that his next goal was to go somewhere with a girl from school who wasn't her, which made Tomozaki point out that she was referring to a date. So she said his goal for the week was to speak with Yuzu Asume at least twice a day, and he asked why she wanted him to speak with another girl when she said he was supposed to go after Fuka. Hanami explained that giving one girl his time and attention would not only raise her affection for him, but raise that of the other girls as well. Tomozaki said it was a cheat move, but she told him that a loner like him had no reason to worry about something like that, and said he should save it for the time he gets a girlfriend. So he stopped arguing and agreed to do as she had instructed him to do. Later in class, he tried to speak to Yuzu about their English assignment, but she said she was yet to do it. So he tried to start up another conversation, which didn't work out. When she walked away, he scolded himself for being a slow-brained idiot, but stopped when he received a text message from Hanami, informing him that she would be late for their meeting. After school, he met with Hanami in the sewing room, and she told him not to blame himself for how his conversation with Yuzu went because if she had done the assignment, the conversation would have gone well. She encouraged him to keep trying to speak with her, but when she noticed his hesitation, she smacked his rice cakes and told him to man up. Throughout the rest of the week, Tomozaki tried and failed to strike up a conversation with Yuzu, and every time during their meeting Hinami gave him a lecture. By Friday, he asked if her cardigan was a new one, and when she said it was the same one she always wore, he felt very foolish. He ended up going to the library, and while he was wallowing in self-pity, Fuku approached him. Tomozaki asked why she was there, but instead of answering him, she pointed out that he was always in the library when they had to change classrooms. She told him that whenever she came around she noticed him sitting there, and he apologized for not taking notice of her. Fuka asked if he liked Michael Andy, but he had no idea who she was referring to until she said that she always saw him reading his books. Tomozaki looked at the book in front of him and realized that because he always grabbed a book from the closest shelf next to his seat. Fuka thought he was a big fan of that author's books. When she told him she was also a fan of the author, he lied and said it was a coincidence that she was also a fan. But when she asked about one of the books, he had no idea what she was talking about. Luckily, she thought he knew nothing of the book because he hadn't read it yet, since the library didn't have it. She then told him that she had written a book, which she wanted him to read and give her feedback on. Tomozaki was surprised by this and didn't know how to respond, but Fuka thought he wasn't interested in reading her book, so she apologized for springing it on him. He immediately told her it was no trouble at all, so she told him she would bring it to school and asked him to keep it a secret since she had not shown it to anyone yet. Tomozaki asked if she was sure that she wanted him to read it first, but Fuka told him that it was, and after saying goodbye, she said something from the book, which he had to look at the book to be able to respond to. Later in the day, while he was with Hanami, she searched for the meaning of the words and found out it was some kind of secret handshake. She then told him that he could use this as an opportunity to get closer to Fuka, but Tomozaki admitted that he had lied to her about the books, which might have led to a misunderstanding. Hanami told him that he couldn't do anything about it, but said that if he ever got the chance to go on a date with Fuka, they could have fun without ever bringing up the author. Tomozaki pointed out that it was a dishonest thing to do, and Hanami told him not to turn into a goody two-shoes and ruin the plan by running away. She then went to stand next to the board, and told him that he had passed his task for the week even though he did not get the chance to properly speak with Yuzu. Since he was too dumb to understand her, she explained that in a game if he failed a quest it was game over, but he had the chance to either start over from the beginning or pick up from where he left off. So in the life game, he could pick up where he left off and at the same time gain experience from the battles he'd lost. She then declared that he had gained some XP and had moved up to level 3. On his way home that day, he noticed Yuzu sitting outside the school building and approached her even though he had no idea what to say to her. He then recalled Hanami telling him that if he didn't know what topic to discuss, he could talk about clothes or the look on the person's face. And this made him ask Yuzu what was wrong with her, since she looked kind of gloomy, but she popped off on him, saying he was mistaken because there was nothing wrong with her. 
Tomozaki apologized and decided to leave her alone before things got out of hand, but she asked him to teach her how to play takvim, which left him speechless. As they walked home together, Yuzu told him that she always walked home with Nakamura. Lately, he had been spending his time practicing takvim after school. She said that when she offered to play with him, he told her that she wasn't worth his time and said she would be as useless as a red light in Grand Theft Auto. She admitted that she wanted to prove him wrong, so she had gone to buy a copy of the game to practice on her own. Tomozeki figured that she didn't see much improvement as she practiced, and Yuzu complained that Nakamura was an airhead who didn't understand anything. She told him that Erika, another one of their classmates, had confessed her feelings for Nakamura, but he blew her off. She said that because Nakamura was always hanging out with her, she thought he liked her, but he proved her wrong when he told her to stop following him around like a lost puppy. Tomozaki wondered what it was like to be young and dumb like her, but asked if she wanted him to teach her to play takvam so she could beat Nakamura, and she said yes. He then asked where they were going to practice, so she suggested they go to her place to do so. At Yuzu's house, Tomozaki won the game, making her ask how he managed to move the way he did, so he started explaining it to her using gaming terms. Yuzu said his behavior was freaking her out, but he suddenly shouted out, saying he knew what she had to do. He then showed her technique and said if she mastered the technique, it would speed up her training. Yuzu tried to recreate what he had just shown to her, but she found it difficult, so he took a stopwatch from his bag and gave it to her. He told her to practice button mashing on it every day so she could be able to pull off the short hop technique in no time. He also told her that while she practiced at home, she should try to memorize the move and showed her a saved game between him and Nanaim, saying that if Yuzu could memorize it, she could take on Nakamura. Yuzu asked how she was supposed to do all the moves, so he drew the instructions on a sheet of paper so it would be easier for her to memorize them. She asked if he also memorized all the controls and moves, and he told her that he had, but Yuzu asked if there was any point in learning all that. Tomozaki explained that he played takvim because he liked it and not because he wanted to gain fame or make friends. She said if he knew all the moves it wouldn't be fun for the other players, which would make others avoid him, and asked if he didn't care about that. Tomozaki admitted that he didn't care what people thought of him, and said what he hated was setting a goal to become stronger and not being able to meet it. Yuzu asked if he was happy being an unwanted loner, and pointed out that she had never seen him enjoy himself at school. He told her there was more to life than laughing with friends, but Yuzu said she couldn't imagine her life like that because she wouldn't change it. He admitted that he always seen life as a piece of garbage, but when he met an arrogant pig-headed gamer, who was just as good as him, the person convinced him that there was more to life than he thought. He said because of that person, he learned to put more effort into the things he was doing in his life, and discovered that life was a good game to play. He then told her that she could change if she wanted to because that was how life worked. Days later, he met with Hanami at a cafe, and she told her that because he was able to spend time with Yuzo, and not screw things up, didn't mean he was off the hook. She said there was another heroine in his playthrough, and asked if he decided to ask Fuka out on a date yet. Tomozaki said he was still thinking about it, so she gave him some tickets, and said that if he ever grew the balls to ask Fuka out, he should make use of it. That night, Tomozaki used the voice recorder to practice how he'd ask Fuka out, but he accidentally switched folders and ended up playing a recording Hinami had made. While listening to it, he realized it was a recording from the day she teased Nakamura for getting dumped, and was amazed by how much effort she put into becoming who she was. The next day, he met Fuka in the library, so he confessed to her that he had never read any of Michael Landy's books, and admitted that he picked the book because it was closest to his seat. He said he only pretended to read them while he was formulating game strategies in his head, and Fuga asked how he knew what to say when she said those coded words to him. So Tomozaki told her that it happened to be on a random page he opened. He then apologized for lying to her, but said that he'd always come to the library, and they could talk about anything she wanted regardless of their favorite authors. He also admitted that he was thinking of reading Michael Andy's books, and asked if they could read them together, which she agreed to. That evening, he told himself that he didn't ask her out because he felt guilty about having to lead her on, and planned to tell Hanami that he would ask Fuka out when he felt everything was better. Just as he was about to step out of the classroom, Nakamura's friends stopped him and took him to the old Av room to meet Nakamura, who was waiting for the rematch. Before they began playing, Yuzu opened the door and came into the room, and when Nakamura tried to get her to leave, she told him she wanted to play against him. Erika, who had accompanied her, tried to tell her there was no use, 
but one of Nakamura's friends cut her off, saying that he and Tomozaki were about to face off in the game, so the girls insisted on staying to watch. When the game began, Tomozaki showed Nakamura that they weren't on the same level by defeating him easily, but when he tried to leave, Nakamura challenged him to another round. As they played, Hanami, who had been waiting for Tomozaki in the sewing room, arrived, and Tomozaki didn't bat an eye as he beat Nakamura again. Still, he demanded they play again and kept losing each time until Erika spoke up, saying he should give it a rest and stop embarrassing himself. Nakamura told her that it was none of her business, and said that she could leave whenever before asking why she was hanging around him. Erika asked why he was being a b and said that if he was feeling high and mighty because she told him she liked him, he had better get off his high horse. She said that she only said it to see if she'd get a chance to date the most popular guy in class. She said she wouldn't have done something so stupid if she knew he was such a freak, but Nakamura told her that he couldn't care what she thought of him. Erika said he was only going to keep embarrassing himself by playing against Tomozaki, and asked if he was so dense he couldn't read the writing on the wall. She called him a pathetic good-for-nothing loser for not being able to win a game he'd spent all this time practicing, and called the game stupid, causing Tomozaki to speak up. Erika asked why a stupid freak like him was speaking to her. But Tomozaki told her to shut up and said she had no right to decide whether a game was good or not if she had never played it. He told her that a dumb bitch like her didn't understand what it meant to put effort into doing something like Nakamura had done with the game because even though he kept losing it didn't stop him from fighting. He said she had no right to mock Nakamura for losing because his efforts were paying off and added that although he hated when people insulted Takvim, he hated people who mocked someone else's efforts. Yuzu backed him up by saying there was nothing wrong with liking something and said she had been playing the game recently, so she understood where he was coming from. Erika got tired of listening to the game nerds, so she turned around and left with her friends and Yuhu fell to her knees because all her bravado had left. Nakamura told her she didn't have to say anything to this self-imposed queen bee, but praised her for standing up to her. He then packed up his game and left with his friends, but told Tomozaki they would play again. When it was just him and Hanami left in the room, Tomozaki pointed out that this was the first time she didn't say something in a conversation. Sometime later, Tomozaki and Hanami went to a restaurant, and he told her that Nakamura wasn't picking on him as much. But when he asked if she had anything to do with it, she changed the topic. She asked if he was ever going to ask Fuga out, so he told her that he was working on it, but pulled out some tickets from his jacket and asked if she would like to go to a screening with him. Hanami declined his offer saying she had club meetings at that time but suggested they see a different movie when she was done with her club activities. Tomozaki felt excited, although he wasn't sure if it was because a beautiful girl asked him out or if it was because he was on his way to living an interesting life, but he decided to go with the flow and agreed to go with her. The next week, while they were settling in for class, Tomozaki reminded Yuza that Nakamura's birthday was coming up and she started freaking out about why he was telling her, causing him to wonder if he'd said the wrong thing. Later during lunch break, Mizusawa, one of Nakamura's friends approached Tomozaki, which surprised him, so he asked if Nakamura was looking for him again. Mizusawa laughed and told him that he wanted to speak with him about what happened the last time. He told him that he shared the same views with him and said it was pretty cool the way Tomozaki boldly said what he was thinking, so he wanted him to know that he had people on his side. That evening in the sewing room, Tomozaki told Hanami about his conversation with Mizusawa and said he suggested that they hang out together with her and another girl. Hanami said it was a good idea and told him to be the one to invite the girl as a sort of practice for one of his tasks. He then suggested asking Yuzu, which made Hanami ask why he picked her. So he explained that he had spoken to her about Nakamura's birthday and that she was thinking of buying anything she could ask Mizusawa or Hanami for advice. He then wondered if he was being too forward by assuming she wanted to buy a gift for Nakamura. But Hanami assured him that Yuzu would, so he made up his mind to ask her. However, when he asked her, Yuzu said she couldn't go with them because she didn't want to drag everyone around with her while she shopped. Tomozaki's mind went into overdrive, and he started thinking of a way to salvage the situation. Eventually, he told her that he also went to buy a gift for Nakamura to patch things up between them, so it wouldn't be a hassle if she tagged along with them. Yuzu was so excited and admitted that she initially declined because she felt uncomfortable with the situation. She then grabbed his shoulders and shook him as she rambled on about how it was good that he wanted to be friends with Nakamura. When she realized what she was doing, she sat back down and apologized before saying she'd be glad to go with them. 
After school, Mizusawa met Tomozaki by his locker and told her that he knew he was up to something. He said that he noticed Tomozaki had changed his behavior and appearance recently, and aside from being chummy with Hanami, he also asked Yuzhu out. So he asked Tomozaki if had been reading the book, How to Become a Rizlord for Dummies, which he admitted to. Later that night, Tomozaki was having dinner with his sister when his phone buzzed with a notification. When he checked it, he saw that it was an invite to a group chat with Yuzu, Hanami, and Mizusawa. He was so surprised that he started overthinking whether he should accept it or not. His sister then asked him to put away his phone because they were eating, but when she noticed his phone screen she asked if he was added to a weird group. He explained that they were his classmates, and she said she understood what it was like to deal with unwanted interactions with people. Tomozaki asked if she was having trouble communicating with people, but she told him that even if she was, he'd be the last person she'd ever asked for advice. So when he returned to his bedroom, he realized he was fretting over nothing and accepted the invitation. That weekend, while waiting for Mizusawa and Yuzu to arrive, Tomozaki was trying to get his game face ready, but Hanami told him to stop stressing. He tried to explain that he wasn't used to being around other people, so she reminded him that he was the one that not only agreed to go out, but he also added shopping to their outing. Hanami told him not to be a whiny bitch about it, and to use it as an opportunity to complete the task she had given him. Mizusawa arrived at that moment, and Hanami started teasing him, surprising Tomozaki with her immediate behavior change. Yuzu soon arrived, and as Tomozaki watched her interact with the others, he wondered if he could fit in easily like her. Seeing as they were now complete, they headed to a store to pick out Nakamura's gift, but Yuzu was having a hard time figuring out what she wanted to buy. She asked Tomozaki for help, and he said the first thing that came to his head, which Yuzu surprisingly found useful. When she turned toward the shelves again, she suddenly turned back and tapped his shoulder. When he turned to her, she pointed to where Hanami and Mizusawa were standing and told him that there was a rumor around school that the two were dating. Tomozaki gasped loudly, but in reality what he was thinking about was the task Hanami had given him earlier, where he was supposed to make two successful suggestions while they were out. She had explained that if the group agreed to his suggestions, he could control their mood for some time and with enough practice he could do the same for larger groups. Back in the present, he was sitting with Yuzu while they were having a drink, and she asked if he decided on what to buy for Nakamura, to which he responded that had not, and asked if she'd made up her mind too, but Yuzu told him she couldn't decide. Tomozaki suggested she had something that Nakamura would want, so she asked what that could be, but realized who she was speaking to and told him not to worry. Tomozaki told her not to write him off because he might just be of help to her, and said that the Nakamura he knew loved games, was handsome, and had a nice hairstyle. Yuzu called him a genius and said she'd just get Nakamura a styling wax for his hair, so when Mizusawa and Hinami joined them, she told him what she wanted. Mizusawa said he knew a place that sold the hair wax and offered to take them there, but Hinami was staring daggers at Tomozaki because he wasn't making any suggestions like was supposed to. At the store, Mizusawa used some of the sample wax on Tomozaki's hair, and after they bought the one they needed they left the store. When Tomozaki got a glimpse of his reflection, he decided to stop being hard on himself about the way he looked, so he went up to Mizusawa and Yuzu to tell them what he wanted to get for Nakamura. After buying his gift, Mizusawa suggested going somewhere to eat, and everyone except Hanami agreed, but when he mentioned it was cheese pizza, she changed her mind immediately. Soon after their lunch they all headed home, and Tomozaki texted Yuzu to ask how she'd heard the rumor about Mizusawa and Hanami. She texted back saying that the entire class knew about it, and it was a common conversation topic between them. On Monday, Hanami and Tomozaki met for their usual meeting in the sewing room, and she told him that he'd failed his tasks. Tomozaki argued that he'd made the suggestion to go to the electronics store, but Hanami reminded him that he was supposed to make two suggestions and not one. She then asked what he'd learned or noticed during the outing, so he told her that Mizusawa's suggestions were good enough, though the first store he took them to was expensive. Hanami grabbed his lips as she told him to stop undermining himself and said that there wasn't a single thing in that store that Nakamura would have liked. Going further, she explained that a suggestion didn't always have to be good, but if the way and manner in which you present it to others is, they could easily go along with it. Tomozaki tried to argue that it was wrong, but she explained further, and he had no choice but to see reason in what she was saying. Later in class, their teacher asked if anyone was interested in running for a student council president, and Hanami stood up 
which wasn't surprising to Tomozaki. The teacher then asked if anyone else was interested, and Minami raised her hand. She then turned to Hanami and told her that she was going to make sure she won. When Hanami and Tomozaki met for their usual meeting in the sewing room, she informed him that due to the upcoming student council elections, they would put their meetings on hold. However, she told him that his new task was to become Minami's campaign manager and explained that Minami was a very social person so he could use the opportunity to brush up his social skills. Tomozaki told her that he wasn't sure if he'd be able to help Minami and said he didn't want to be the reason she lost the election. Hanami assured him that it didn't matter who Minami's campaign manager was because there was no way she would be able to beat her. After leaving Hanami, Tomozaki was lost in thought thinking about the task she had given him, when Minami came running down the hallway and nearly ran into him. He apologized and used the chance to ask if he could be her campaign manager, but Minami refused his offer saying he was an unreliable person. Later that day, Tomozaki went to the library, but he just sat at his table looking worried, so Fuka, who was reading a book on the table next to him, asked what the problem was. He told her he was thinking about the elections and Fuka said she was wondering why Minami decided to run. Tomozaki told her that probably because she wanted to change the way things were around the school, but Fuka said she felt Minami wanted to change things about herself too. She also said she would understand if that was what Minami wanted to do, because she too hoped she could change things about herself. Tomozaki was surprised by her admission, and Fuka shyly begged him not to mention it to anyone, but he found her behavior cute. That evening, he thought about his conversation with Fula, as he wondered what it was that Minami wished to change about herself. He couldn't understand why someone as popular as her would ever want to change anything about herself. The next day on his way to school, he saw Minami campaigning in front of the school gate, and when he got closer to her, she introduced him to Yumi, one of the juniors in her club, whom she'd made her campaign manager. She also apologized for calling him an incompetent idiot when he offered to become her campaign manager, so he assured her that he had no hard feelings towards her before continuing on his way. He soon came across Inami, who was also campaigning, and saw that she had chosen Mizusawa as her campaign manager, which he thought was a good move because Mizusawa had a silver tongue. Later in the day, Tomozaki was walking through the hallway, when Minami almost ran into him again. He told her to stop running around like there was a fire somewhere, and Minami apologized. She then showed a copy of her manifesto, which, after reading through Tomozaki, said she needed help, so he took her to the copy room to print another one. Minami thanked him for his help, and Tomozaki told her that since she was an airhead when it came to matters like this, he would be willing to help her with problems that required her to force her brain cells out of retirement. Minami accepted his offer because she thought it was cool to say she had a brain working behind the scenes. She also admitted that she needed the extra help since Yumi usually had club activities after school. She then asked why he wanted to help her, and after thinking about his answer, Tomozaki told her that he wanted to take Hanami down. He explained that as a gamer, the tougher the opponent, the more fired up he got, and he considered Hanami as a tough opponent. Minami teased him for trying to act cool but said they were on the same page. She also told him that she was feeling discouraged, but now that she had him on her side, she was feeling good. He then told her that he had an ace up his sleeve which he included in her manifesto, and as part of his plan, they went to the gym to speak to the different sports clubs. When they got there, Minami ran up to Tama and started stiffing her like a dog even though Tama tried to tell her that she smelled like a dirty gym bag. While she was harassing the poor girl, one of her seniors approached them and hit her on the head, scolding her for disrupting their practice. She told the senior she had come to campaign for the elections and whispered that she planned to get an electric ball pump, which the senior agreed would be a good way to get support from the other ball clubs. That evening, Tomozaki and Minami were talking on a playground in their neighborhood, and Minami asked Tomozaki why he was going to great lengths to bring Hanami down. Instead of answering her, Tomozaki threw the question back at her. So she explained to him that everyone always remembered who came first. Whoever came in second was always forgotten and became insignificant. She said she always came in second after Hanami in everything they did, which was why she wanted to prove that she could be better than second best. The next day, Minami and Tomozaki went ahead with their next phase of the campaign. He went to the gym and asked Tama to listen to the music he played from different areas inside the gym. When he was done, he asked which was loudest and she told him, but instead of leaving, he asked if she wasn't curious about what he was doing. Tama told him that as long as she was doing it to help Minami, she didn't mind, 
but told him not to push Minami too much because she tended to try and handle more than she could. Tomozaki assured her that he would look out for Minami and keep her in check. Later on, he met with Minami, and she told him that she had managed to speak with the first years. They planned to get them on their side with the promise of installing air conditioners in each classroom. Tomozaki knew the older kids wouldn't be swayed by such promises, which was why he had sent her to speak to the first years. So with that part of the plan complete, they were sure they had the votes of the first years in the ball clubs. He then handed her the campaign speech he'd written, and while they were going through it, they didn't notice a smiling Hanami watching them. The next day, during the morning assembly, the candidates for the student council president gave their campaign speech. Hanami was the first to address the students in while giving her speech. She mentioned the same campaign promises Tomozaki and Hanami had. Tomozaki couldn't believe she was able to get the students pumped up with her speech and wondered if that was her controlling the mood. He was impressed by how she easily swayed the crowd and got them on her side by thinking the right words. When she rounded up her speech, Yumi gave a supporting speech on behalf of Minami before she went on. When it was finally Minami's turn, Tomozaki went up to the second floor and played a recording, which Minami used to her advantage to get the students to agree with her plans. After her speech, she rushed backstage and hugged a confused Tomozaki, who wasn't expecting that kind of reaction from her. When they left the auditorium, they met Hanami and Mizusawa outside, and both girls congratulated each other for their respective speeches. Mizusawa noticed Tomozaki and said he had no idea he was working on Minami's campaign, but she didn't give him a chance to respond because she jumped in front of him saying Tomozaki was her ace. Hanami then said they had to go since they were still rivals until after the elections. As they watched them go, Minami said that seeing the two together made the rumors about them seem true. Election day soon came, and after the votes were counted, Hanami was declared the winner. Tomozaki and Minami went to the roof to drink some juice to wash away their sorrows. Minami said she may have lost, but next time she would do her best to win no matter what. Tomozaki couldn't tell if she was okay with losing but agreed that losing wasn't a reason for them to give up on the things they wanted. Later he met with Hinmei in the sewing room, and she asked if he'd been the one to come up with the idea for Minami's speech. Tomozaki admitted to it, and Hanami laughed saying she knew he was the only person who could come up with something like that. He said he had hoped it would boost Minami's chances of winning but in the end they lost. Hanami told him that she thought it was a brilliant idea and asked him not to beat himself up for losing. He then told her that she'd play dirty by using their campaign promises the way she did, and she said that the next time he wanted to help Minami, he should make sure he kept some things to himself, because Minami had a loud mouth. She then showed him her phone and told him that, since they were done with the election, it was time for him to complete his task of going out with a girl. After he met with Hanami, Tomozaki stood outside the library looking at his phone until Fuka arrived and asked if was going in. Inside, he tried to think of ways to ask Fuka to go with him to the movies, but he was getting cold feet. Fuka noticed his behavior and asked if he was alright, so he tried to ask her out on the date. Fuka said she knew about the movie but suddenly got shy as she listened to the bumbling idiot trying to get his words out. Summoning the courage, he managed to get the words out and asked her to go see the movie with her, and she agreed. On his way out of the library, he saw Tama looking out a window, so he went to see what she was looking at. When he got close enough, Tama noticed him and asked if he had just left the library which he confirmed. He then asked why she was still around. So she looked out the window and explained that Hanami and Minami were still practicing. She told him that since the election, Minami had been working twice as hard on everything and said she wished she wouldn't push her too hard just so she could measure up to Minami. Her words made Tomozaki remember his conversation with Minami where she told him she wanted the chance to be the first for once in her life. The next day, while he and Hanami were talking, she told her that Minami had started practicing earlier than her. Tomozaki was surprised because he had no idea that she always trained before coming for their meetings. She said there was nothing wrong in putting in extra effort to achieve a set goal, but added that sometimes there were situations that a person would find hard to tackle. After he left her, he bumped into Minami, and while they were talking he told her that Hanami told him she'd been practicing extra hard. Minami said she had to because the elections had taken up most of her time, so she didn't want to fall behind. She then told him she was going to the cafeteria to get lunch, but he said he'd buy something from the convenience store instead. When she let him alone, the bird-brained boy wondered if he'd just turned down an invitation to eat with her. Later that evening, he saw Tama again and decided to join her to watch the two girls running. Tomozaki told her that he knew Minami was trying so hard, because she had lost the election, 
and asked if she'd always been competitive. Taman admitted that she didn't become friends with Minami until the second term of their first year. She explained that she was introverted and didn't know how to make friends, but Minami made it her duty to bug her every day. Tama said she tried everything to get her to stop, but none of it worked, so in the end they started talking and soon after she began making friends in school. She also told him that Hanami had come to her one day and said that Minami asked her for advice on how to befriend Tama. Hanami had told Minami to try talking to Tama every day to get her to open up, but Minami had decided to bug her instead. However, Hanami made Tama promise not to tell Minami she knew about the conversation because she would feel embarrassed. This was why whenever Minami set her mind to do something she didn't try to stop her since she always did them with all her heart and good intentions. As the weeks progressed, Kamuzaki noticed that Minami had been sleeping more during classes and wondered why she was pushing herself. Even when he went to the library Fuka told him that she noticed Minami had been trying to compete with Hanami. He asked how she was sure of that, so she explained that as a writer she was able to read people which allowed her to know how to write about them. However, she wasn't able to read Hanami like she'd done with Minami, because she wasn't an open book, so it was hard to tell what she was thinking most of the time. After leaving the library, he saw Tama watching the girl train, so he joined her. Tama told him that since the election Minami had been overdoing it with her training, and she wasn't sure if she should intervene or let her do her own thing. Later that evening, while they were on their way home, Tomozaki asked Minami if she was overworking herself just so she could beat Hanami. Minami told him that she didn't want to quit because of one loss so she was going to keep fighting to prove herself. The next day, Hanami arrived at the field and was surprised to see Minami already there. As they ran together, Minami remembered her first game against Hanami and how her team had lost to her. She was not happy with the loss, but her teammates had told her that they were fine with coming in second because they knew they had done their best. Back in the present, Minami tripped and nearly fell while she was running, causing Hanami to worry but she managed to stop herself in time. When Hanami met with Tomozaki, she expressed her concerns about how much strain Minami was putting on her body by practicing too much. Tomozaki said he'd noticed it too and asked why Minami was so obsessed with beating her. But Hanami told him that it wasn't her story to tell, so went to look for Yumi instead and asked her to tell him more about Minami's middle school days. That evening, it began raining and both Tama and Tomozaki were glad because they knew Minami wouldn't be able to train. However, they were shocked to see someone running on the field and rushed out of the building. But when they got there, they saw it was Hanami and not Minami. The next day, when it was time for training, Tomozaki noticed Minami leaving the school, so he followed her and caught up with her at the train station. So while they waited for the train, he told her he knew about the basketball game which took place between her and Hanami in middle school. He then asked if that was what made her start competing against Hanami. Minami explained that after her game against Hanami, she had gone to watch her play, but Hanami's team had lost. She said that what intrigued her the most was the fact that when another team was announced as the winner Hanami cried, which she could understand because she knew how much effort she put in to win. She told him that she made up her mind to be just like Hanami and strive to be the best, but when they started high school, she and Hanami became friends after Hanami approached her and praised her for playing well at the game. However, as time passed, she kept coming in second to Hanami and realized that she could never shine as bright as her. Tomozaki tried to tell her that she was just as good as Hanami, but she brushed him off saying she forgot something at school and needed to go get it, leaving him alone at the station. The next week, Hanami told Tomozaki that Manami didn't show up for practice that morning or during the weekend, making him even more worried about her sudden change. Later that day, he overheard Tama asking Manami if it was true that she quit the track team. Manami told her that she had thought about it over the weekend and decided that was the best thing to do. Hanami joined the two girls and Minami apologized for leaving the team even though Hanami told her that she always looked forward to running together with her. Watching her interaction made Tomozaki wonder what the real reason was for Minami leaving the team. When classes were over, Minami called out to Tama, saying she was heading home, but Tomozaki got up and asked her to go home with both him and Tama. Tama even said she'd skip her training so the three of them could go together. So Minami apologized to Yumi for ditching her and went with Tama and Tomozaki. While they were waiting at the train station, Minami tried to make small conversations, but Tama asked if she hated Hanami. Minami kept quiet for a while and then told her that she could never hate Hanami because she was a kind person. However, she started crying and said that even though Hanami was a kind person and had nothing but good qualities, 
she couldn't help but feel inferior around her. She admitted that she was envious of Hinami, and decided that if she remained on the team with such thoughts on her mind, it would only make her grow to hate Hinami. She said that although she admired the efforts of Hinami, she could never be as good as her. Tama then nibbled on her ear, pulled her head down to her chest, and began rubbing her head. She told her that she may not be the best in academics or sports, but she was the best at putting others first. Tama said even though she liked Hinami, Manami was her number one hero, and told her that if she wanted to be number one badly, she didn't have to look far, because she was already the number one idiot in their group. Manami smiled and bit Tama's finger, before grabbing the poor girl and hugging the life out of her. The next day, Manami apologized to her coach and the track team, so they forgave her and accepted her back on the team. Meanwhile, in the sewing room, Hinami told Tomozaki that his new task was to give Nakamura his present and speak to him for three minutes. After Yusa gave him hers, Tomozaki summoned the courage to walk up to Nakamura and hand him the present. Nakamura accepted it and thanked him, but Tomozaki noticed Hinami telling him that his three minutes weren't up. He didn't know what else to talk to Nakamura about, but he also didn't want to fail his task, so he foolishly asked if the rumors about Hinami and Mizusawa were true. Later that day, while they were at a cafe, the girls teased Tomozaki for asking Nakamura such a stupid question. Minami then asked Hinami if the rumors were true, but she assured them that there wasn't anything going on between her and Mizusawa. So Minami took the chance to apologize to them for how she behaved over the past week and gave them each a weird-looking cat keychain, which Tomozaki thought looked weird, but the girls seemed to love. Finally, summer break began. But for Tomozaki, it only meant that Hinami was going to add more tasks for him to complete. While the two of them ate at a restaurant, Hinami told him that his biggest goal that summer was to start dating Fuka, causing him to shout in surprise. Tomozaki told her that Fuka was too good to be with an ugly loser like him, but Hinami told him they already had things in common, and for some unknown reason, Fuka liked him. She said she would help him prepare so he wouldn't mess things up with Fuka, and announced that they were going to have a pretend date. She wrote down all the places they would visit, so we could take the lead as if he'd done all the planning. And when he looked at them, the first place was a clothing store. When he got there, she helped him pick out some shirts, and when it was time to leave, she gave him a backpack. She said he should see it as a gift, but Tomozaki tried to refuse it, so she said he could buy her something in exchange for it. And Emmy picked out a metal badge, but Tomozaki said the trade wasn't a fair one, even though she insisted on taking the badge anyway. After exchanging their items, they went to a gaming store, which was the second thing on their list, and there they played one round of Takfam, which Tomozaki won. Next, they went to a coffee shop, and Hanami taught him how to add people online after which she told him to message Fuka. He typed out a message, which he showed to Hanami, and she read it out loud, making him feel embarrassed, but she told him it was good and asked him to send it. She also told him that Fuka didn't always reply to messages immediately so he didn't have to feel bad if she didn't respond till the end of the day. However, to their surprise, Fuka replied almost immediately, saying she was free to hang out any time, which made Hinami conclude that she was head over heels for Tomozaki. Later on, Hinami invited Tomozaki to come on a trip with her and some of their classmates, causing him to start over, but she assured him that it would be a good opportunity to make male friends and boost his XP, so he agreed. She told him they would meet at Minami's house to talk about the trip, and said his mission that day was to mess with Misusawa, saying that teasing was the way guys bonded with each other. The next day, they arrived at Minami's house, but she told them that her grandmother was around, so they couldn't use the house, so Hanami suggested they go to Tomozaki's house. At Tomozaki's house, they go up to his room, and Minami immediately begins searching for dirty magazines, but all she finds are game controllers. Then they sat down to plan how they would get Yuzu and Nakamura together. And, while they were talking, Tomozaki made sure to give his opinions and counter some of Mizusawa's suggestions, just like Hanami had told him to. Tomozaki was returning from the kitchen after dropping off the plates they used when he bumped into Mizusawa, who pointed out that he'd bought the hair wax but wasn't using it. Tomozaki admitted that he didn't know how to use it, so Mizusawa decided to show him how to make use of it. When they returned to the room, the girls gushed over Tomozaki's hair and Minami started teasing the two boys because of how they were behaving. After the three bid in farewell, Tomozaki told himself that his summer was going to be a fun one with them around. The next day, he met with Fuka for their movie date, and after the movie, they went somewhere to eat. But while they were chatting, Tomozaki began thinking he was saying nonsense. 
He remembered the flashcards Hanami had given to him and brought up a topic from it since he believed they were better. However, Huka told him that she felt he changed from someone easy to talk to to someone whom she struggled to speak with, which made him feel like he'd failed his task. On her way home, Thuka had explained that she found it hard to talk to guys, so when she said what she said earlier, she wasn't referring to him. She also told him that she enjoyed their date and would love to go out with them again, making Tomozaki feel relieved. While they walked home, he called Hinami on the phone and told her about the date, so she advised him to invite Fuka to see some fireworks with him, which he did once he got home. On the day of the trip, while they were on the train, Hinami told Tomozaki that his task was to either make a suggestion, tease, or disagree with Nakamura three times during the trip. She also told him to work on being friends with Mizusawa, since he was the only one who would be easier to befriend. When they arrived, they took a bus to the campsite, and there, Hanami assigned tasks to everyone but made sure to pair Yuzu up with Nakamura. While she and Tomozaki were starting the fire, he asked why she had paired him with her. Hanami said aside from Yuzu and Nakamura, who had to be together, the remaining tasks weren't something he could handle, and she knew that if she paired him with any other person he'd just stand there glitching like an old computer. She also said she was tired of pretending to be perfect, so being with him would give her a break from that. After they ate, Nakamura suggested they play in the river, and while they were splashing around, the stupid half would take a scared Yuzu with a crab, causing her to fall. Luckily, Nakamura caught her in time, and the others were glad that their plan was moving accordingly. Later on, they retired to their cabins, and Nakamura asked Mizusawa if the camp had cards and Mizusawa told him that he could borrow from them. He then called Tomozaki, but before he could speak, Mizusawa cut in and asked Nakamura what was going on between him and his ex. Tomozaki was grateful to Mizusawa, because if he didn't distract Nakamura, he would have sent him out to get the cards like he was his lackey. The boys continued talking about Nakamura's ex, and he told them that she texted him from time to time even though she had a boyfriend, but he didn't care because she had a nice pair of racks, and he liked her. Mizusawa asked Tomozaki what he thought of it, and he said the girl was stringing him along, using the chance to do his task. Nakamura told him to piss off, causing the remaining guys to laugh at his embarrassment. When they settled down, Mizusawa asked Nakamura if he had his eye on any girl, and he admitted that he did, but she was always talking to him about a guy she liked. Later on, while Nakamura and Teiki were arm wrestling, Mizusawa and Tomozaki were chatting with Minami and Hinami. Mizusawa told the girls what Tomozaki said to Nakamura, and the girls told them that Yuzu admitted she had told Nakamura she was interested in a guy. Mizusawa then told the girls that Nakamura said the girl he was interested in told him she liked someone else. Just then, Nakamura called out to them, and together they went to the girls' room, where they played card games. After the game, Mizusawa asked why Hanami and Tomozaki were so serious during their game even though it was a simple card game. Making Tomozaki realize that he had been so invested in the game that he forgot the task he was supposed to be working on. When the others started complaining about their rotten luck in the game, Nakamura laughed at them because they sucked at the game. Tomozaki took advantage of the situation to continue his task, so he reminded Nakamura that he did worse than the rest, causing the others to laugh at him. Being the type to like gossip, Minami asked Mizusawa what interesting things were going on in his life. Nakamura then told them Mizusawa had been flirting with a girl from another school, but he just brushed it aside, saying he wasn't sure if he'd date her before going to the bathroom. Tomozaki went along with him and used the chance to build his friendship with him, so he asked Mizusawa about the girl. Mizusawa said he was flirting with the girl and didn't know if he liked her or not, but when Tomozaki asked why he would be with someone he didn't like, Mizusawa didn't give him an answer. Later that evening, they went to the bathhouse, and while in the bath, the girls talked about how they would get Yuzu and Nakamura together. Meanwhile, in the boys' bath, the boys were stunned into silence when they saw Tomozaki's pipe. Teki picked him up as the other two teased him for being as hung as a horse, so when Teki dropped him, he came face to face with Nakamura's junk. Deciding that it was his chance to finish his task, he told Nakamura that his sausage was pretty small for someone his age, causing the other two to burst out laughing. When it was time to return to the camp, they made Nakamura and Yuza go together, while Minami, Mizusawa and Teki went together, leaving Tomozaki together with Hanami. Hanami then told Tomozaki that she was going to give him some training, but he didn't understand what she was saying until she suddenly screamed and hugged him. 
That was when he realized she was trying to act the role of a damsel in distress. As they walked to the camp, Tomozaki noticed an insect and tried to step on it, but it flew up, causing her to scream in fear. When the bug flew away, Hanami asked Tomozaki to help her up, but when he did she held onto his neck and kept looking at him like she wanted to kiss him. Yes! 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 Tomozaki froze because he thought he was about to get his first kiss, but when she moved closer, he moved away. No! 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 When they got to the cabin, they all posed for a picture, but Nakamura started teasing Yuzu, and the two left together. Mizusawa then told the others that the two had made plans to hang out after the trip, which they considered a win on their part. Later that night, Hinemi texted Tomozaki, and the two met to discuss how Tomozaki fared during the trip. While they were talking, they heard someone's footsteps, so Tomozaki got up to hide just as Mizusawa arrived. He took Tomozaki's spot and talked with Hinemi about Yuzu and Nakamura, and how the two were so dense and oblivious to each other's feelings. However, he said he admired how they were both sincere, even though they were blind to each other's feelings. Mizusawa also said he liked how Tomozaki tackled every situation head-on, which made him think about his life. He admitted that he felt like he was watching himself from a distance as he mindlessly went through life, and said he felt it was the same with her. Hanami told him that she always tried to live up to people's expectations of her, and said that it was normal for people to pretend until they found someone they were comfortable enough with to open up. Tomozaki, who had been listening to the two converse, knew that Hanami wasn't being honest with Mizusawa. Since he'd spent so much time with her, he knew she only showed him a side she knew he could relate to. As they kept talking, Mizusawa admitted that he liked her, but said he knew she didn't feel the same way. He told her that he planned on finding out more about himself and things he liked, while he tried to get her to like him. Suddenly, Tomozaki came out of his hiding place and apologized for listening in on his love confession. Hanami explained that Tomozaki had run off when he heard Mizusawa coming because he didn't want him to misunderstand them. She then suggested they return to their cabins and try to forget everything that happened. The next day, they returned home, and Hanami texted Tomozaki, telling him to confess his feelings to Fuka after their date. Later on, he met Fuka, and while they'd walked to where the fireworks display was going to be held, he told her about his trip with the others. When the fireworks display began, Tomozaki realized he didn't even bring up any of the topics he memorized from the flashcards and asked Fuka if she found it easier to talk to him. She told him that talking to him felt easier and more natural, which made him feel better about himself. When the display ended, he remembered Hinami's suggestion, but instead of confessing as she told him to, he told Fuka they should head back. At the train station, he sent a text to Hinami asking if he could call her, but she told him that she would come to him instead. When she arrived, she asked if he'd confessed to Fuka, and he told her that he didn't. He then explained that the entire time he was with Fuka, he didn't bring up any topic he had memorized, but when he asked if she enjoyed talking with him, she said yes. This made him understand that he found it hard to talk to her before because he wasn't being himself. Hanami told him that the next time that happened, he should have countermeasures in place, but he told her that he didn't need them. He said they were supposed to focus on whether he had feelings for Fuka or not. Hanami didn't seem to share the same views because she felt that people saying they had to find themselves were stupid. She argued that going through life without strategies and goals was pointless, but Tomozaki told her that setting goals and tasks as a reason to keep moving forward was wrong. However, Hanami took it as he was giving up on changing his life, so she removed the badge he'd given to her from her bag and told him to return her bag pack before leaving him alone. As he watched her train leave, he blamed himself for ending a relationship he thought was blooming. Days later, Tomozaki was in his bedroom playing Takfam, while he remembered his last conversation with Hanami. Just then, his sister came into the room and asked him to come down for dinner, but before she left, she told him that she had no idea what was going on that made him revert to his old pathetic loser lifestyle. When he went downstairs, she pointed out that since he'd been holed up in his room he didn't pick up his phone once. She also informed him that he'd received messages from a girl but because he was behaving like it was the end of the world, he didn't respond to them. Tomozaki picked up the phone and saw that the messages were from Fuka, asking him to go pick up a new book, so he texted her back, saying he would go with her. When they met up, he went with her to the bookstore to get her book, after which they went to a restaurant. In the restaurant, he told her that someone had been teaching him how to build his confidence and change his lifestyle. He admitted that most of the times he spoke to her, he'd memorized topics, so the conversations would move along smoothly but when she told him she found it easy to talk with him on the night of the fireworks display, 
he hadn't used any of the memorized topics. He also told her that while he liked the new him, he was worried that he was losing his real self, so he wasn't sure what to do. Fuka told him that whenever she thought of him, all she ever saw was black and white, which made her feel like they were similar. But as she got to know him, she started seeing more color and told him that if that color was a result of the guidance of someone, it was a good thing. She made him understand that he could keep being himself while enjoying his new life at the same time. Later that night, Tomozaki texted Hanami, asking to meet up and talk, so she told him to meet her at the same place they first met. When she got there, he told her that before meeting her he thought life wasn't something to enjoy. But as time went on she showed him that just like in video games, he could do whatever he wanted. He then gave her a whole ass speech on how life wasn't about strategies and plans, but Hanami didn't agree with him. So he told her that the reason she wasn't able to be him and tack him was because she didn't know what she wanted. He told her that because he was sure of what he wanted in the game, he was able to become one with it. Knowing that he had touched a sensitive topic, he told her that he would continue to live his life, but this time, he would do it while exploring his own identity. He hoped that by doing so, he could prove to her that she was wrong about everything. Hanami still insisted that he was saying a boatload of rubbish, but agreed to try things his way. They then went to a restaurant to have lunch, and Hanami told him that since he was still trying to win at life, his next task would be to get a part-time job. On the day of his job interview, he discovered that Mizusawa also worked there, and he was going to work together with him. Sometime later, he went with Hanami, Minami, Mizusawa, and Yuzu to help Yuzu pick out an outfit for her date with Nakamura. Yuzu tried on different outfits, but the three stooges couldn't agree on the best one, so she turned to Tomozaki for advice, and since his fashion sense was almost non-existent, he told her that she looked good in all of them. Another day, he went shopping with Minami and Tama, and Minami insisted on buying a weird-looking keychain because she felt it looked like Tama. Tomozaki also picked a keychain, and when he returned home, he gave it to his sister, who was going to reject it until he told her Minami liked it. He also made time to go on dates with Fuka, while doing his new job and playing Takum. If you've gotten to this part of the video and would like a part 2, let us know by commenting RIP Nakamura. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you guys in the next video.